This conference will now be recorded. Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Claire Bartlett and you are watching Me and My Racket. It's the show about tennis industry professionals sharing their stories and connecting over the sport we all know and love. And today we are joined by Allie Will. Allie, hello. Hello. Um, everyone, Allie is a private coach in California and she also coaches for Solano Community College in Santa Rosa Junior College. And Allie, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. Of course, of course. How are you doing today? What's been going on? Um, not much. Just uh, had a little bit of a workout. I'm actually in Southern California right now visiting my, my parents uh, in the quarantine. So we're getting a lot of grocery shift here and uh, just trying to exercise and stay as active as we, we can during this time. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's definitely the best plan of action, staying healthy and active. What were you doing for a workout? Um, <laughs> body weight mostly, lots yeah. of lunges, medicine ball, um, had some jump roping going on out there, um, some core exercises. I got my dad involved in a circuit. It was super fun. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> yeah, and then I rode my bike a little bit, so uh, mm -hmm. exercised for a little over an hour and a half, so it was really yeah. fun. It was fun to get... A buddy system of having my dad work out with me and he's been working right. out really well over the last two years so he's probably fitter than I am so it's nice to have a buddy. No it's always good to have someone push you and just be there it makes you like look forward to things like that a lot more than just doing it by yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's also fun when we have music and we're singing and dancing yeah. while exercising in between breathing of course so. <laughs> yeah yeah. Do y'all like the same music or a little different taste? Well, my, dad, my dad likes just about anything. So anything I put on, he he's always happy, happy go lucky with anything. Yeah. That's <laughs> awesome. Need to pick something. So. Yeah. Perfect, perfect with that buddy. Sorry. Definitely the perfect workout buddy. Then it doesn't complain about anything. Yeah, there you go. It just <laughs> works hard and gets it done. I know my mom and I, we went for a walk run yesterday because I'm just now starting to run a little bit. Um, and, and it's just such a good feeling to like be outside and like get your heart rate up, you know, especially all this time indoors. It's just, I think it's a shock for everybody, you know, on some level. So yeah. Yeah. And it's just nice to challenge yourself. And I like to do it in the morning rather than the afternoon because then I know I've already accomplished something. And because I am a tennis coach, I'm so used to being outside and seeing the sun. So it's nice to just be outside. And I'm lucky that I'm visiting my family during, you know, these 10 days because they've got so much property that I can walk and not run into anybody else. So I mean, we'll see the sun and be able to yeah. roam around. So really appreciating that right now. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Well, how long has it been since you've been self-isolating out there? Because I know it's been a few weeks, right? Yeah, I think it's honestly, I'm, I feel like it's almost been a month at this point, but it's definitely, um, it's definitely been at least three weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, I've definitely done since I, I last spoke with you. I've done a lot of Zoom calls um, and Google Meets. I think is what it's called mm -hmm. with uh, yeah. both of the teams that I work with. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, just trying to keep them involved, keep them communicating, even if it's tennis specific or not, just like keep the team uh, bonding going and just trying to keep everybody communicating during this time. Right. Yeah, no, that's really important. Just making sure we're all like touching base with everybody and <laughs> still connecting because yeah. we need each other. <laughs> as much as some of us. Sorry, go ahead. What? Well, everybody's in the same boat. I think that, you know, we yeah. can all relate do something that we're feeling or something that we're missing and it's nice to be able to talk about it. I mean, everybody's dealing with something different. So in, yeah. we can all help, help each other and help grow together if we just, you know, communicate about how we're feeling, what's going on. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Well, um, I want to take a little time and get into some tennis talk if you're ready. <laughs> and, um, yeah, and I, I know we've both been in tennis our whole lives, but I wanted to get um, your story and how you started and who was there with you first and, um, you know, going through your playing experience and your pre professional experience up until now. So will you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so I uh, grew up in Northern California. Um, I started playing tennis when I was nearly 11 years old. I uh, played every other sport uh, before I picked up a tennis racket. And I felt like that really kind of worked in my favor because by the time I picked up a racket, um, I was coordinated enough to already be able to hit the ball over the net. Um, mm -hmm. Just needed some technical help, obviously. Um, but yeah, I started when I was almost 11. Um, I went to Palm Springs 
my grandfather uh, had a good friend named Tommy Tucker, big in the tennis industry um, in Palm Springs. And he saw me hit the tennis ball and said, you know, I just had this fire in me and I just love to compete. And he said that if I really wanted to um, play tennis, that I should go to the Everett Tennis Academy and try out um, that in Florida. So I went and I tried that out for a week or 10 days and I just loved it. Like it was just love, love at first sight. I love the entire atmosphere. I love the humidity. Um, so yeah, I was, I was hooked after that. And, and my family, um, my, my brother, my parents and I, we moved to Florida and I started, you know, training two hours a day at the Everett Tennis Academy. And, um, that's where we I met you. saw each other there when we were young. Like, I don't, I don't think we knew each other then, but we were there at the same time. I know. Well, you were probably so much better than I was. I was just learning how to hit, learning how to hit a ball at every level. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it's just a small world. Tennis is such a, such, there's so many people who play tennis, but it's such a small community. Uh, uh, yeah. So many people trained at the Everett Academy that are playing professional tennis now or who play right. division tennis just all different levels but yeah that's where I started and um my coach that kind of picked me up and guided me in the direction I was looking to go was Andy Brandy um mm -hmm. I started working with him at the Everett Academy when I was about 11 or 12 um and I worked with him he left the Everett Academy and went to the Harold Solomon Institute in Fort Lauderdale and um I followed him there and I worked with him um almost up until I went to college um, I went to the University of Florida, where I got to spend more time with you. Um, but yeah, I mean, that was such a positive experience for me as well. I was on the team for, for three seasons. Um, my last season at UF before I turned pro, um, I believe I only had one loss, and that came um, the NCAA individual semifinals. Mm -hmm. And so um, I really wanted to attempt to play professional tennis. So I finished out that season at University of Florida. Uh, we won our second national championship. Um, just felt like I had done so many great things there. And I just, you know, I had a passion. I really wanted to take it one step further. So I played, uh, I played pro tennis for almost two years. Um, and it was great. I loved it, but it was really expensive for me. Um, I never really had very much money going into it and it was very hard to support myself, but I had a lot of um, ups and downs and great experiences and yeah. got inside the top 100 in the world in doubles. Um, I think my best ranking in singles was 280. Yeah. Um, and around that time, I, I rolled my ankle and I was going to be out for a while. Um, yeah. And I just thought about how I really wanted to make sure that I went back to school and I, I had my education so that when I had kids, I was able to tell them that you know, I went back and it wasn't easy, but I, you know, finished my education and that was something really, really important to me. So I hung up the racket for a little bit and I, I went back and I finished my education. And during that time, um, I was the uh, student or volunteer coach for the University of Florida, right. which was yeah. such an incredible experience. And that's yeah. probably where I started uh, really enjoying coaching. So I helped mm -hmm. them. Um, I arrived in January and I got to be with them for two seasons. Uh, just help out with the team, get to know the ins and outs of the other side of the tennis right. ball. Um, and I was also a private coach at DB Racket Club in Gainesville. Mm -hmm. And then when I graduated, I uh, moved back to California and I've been coaching here ever since. So yeah. there you go. <laughs> That's quite a story. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, um, well, so kind of like, paint the picture for us now, like with your roles as a coach and then private coach, because I know you do some stuff with USTA um, and then you're in Santa Rosa and everywhere. So kind of give us like what that looks like day to day or, or you know, even the week, maybe what it, what a typical day or week looks like. Yeah. So um, like you said before, I work for two, two community colleges. So both of those colleges have a men's and women's program um, and they all practice at the same time. So mm -hmm. I had to juggle uh, both schools, but luckily their practices were at different times and they're an, about an hour, hour and 15 minutes apart from each other. So when we're not in season, I made every practice for every team. Um, I spent two hours with one team, two hours with another team, and then I would teach private lessons. So mm -hmm. my day was uh, pretty jam packed, but it was great. And then with regard to, um, to USTA, I've been um, trying to make sure I get all of my certifications done mm -hmm. and uh, just making sure that I'm networking and understand everything that I can that 
um, can propel me forward in my, in my career as a tennis coach. So every wow. opportunity that I could get with USGA to help with some of the regional and sectional camps in Carson, which is Southern mm -hmm. California. Um, yeah. I've, I've been reach, reaching out with them. So I've been doing camps with them for now, I think almost two years. Yeah. Um, I did three or four a year and it's so much fun. Um, mm -hmm. And those are normally on the weekends. So when I was in season, I, I was lucky that I didn't end up missing out on um, too many practices with the, the group of kids I work with in NorCal. But um, that means you don't get too many days off when you're working Monday through Friday. Yeah. Right through Pretty Sunday, true. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, it, was, um, it was great. I mean, I just had got to meet a lot of um, new up and coming mm -hmm. USA stars and uh just watch them grow and it was a, it's been a really really fun experience to work with USTA and also work with so many different levels at the community college level yeah oh yeah and you just got your high performance right um, I did. yes I actually yeah. um, a few weeks ago just finished going over with Paul lovers yeah. um, everything that I turned in and it was just such a positive experience I went to I went to Orlando and there was a group of um, co-workers that were trying to get the same certification. I think there was maybe 15. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was, we were there for a little over a week and learned a lot. And I just felt like I, every single day I was getting fed a whole bunch of information on um, all, all positive stuff, how to work with kids at all different levels. Um, really, really great opportunity. So I'm really happy yeah. that I was able to get that done before this happened because there were two other options this year and they were both at Carson that I was considering doing because it might have been easier with my with my schedule. Mm -hmm. uh, but I just took the plunge and, and went to Orlando and took a few days off of work here and got it done. And I'm really thankful for that now mm -hmm. because it, I would have had to wait an entire year to get that accomplished mm -hmm. now given the, the virus. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's it's good. You got that. that. I have that knowledge, and I can continue to grow on the knowledge that I learned from that, and help help people even when they're yeah. really far away from me right now because I have so mm -hmm. much more information and right. have a lot more people that can help me along the way now. Yeah, yeah, well, awesome. Well, and so how did you did you have to do a few things to get to the high performance? Like where you're in. Because I had done some of the um, camps in Carson, and right. I knew a lot of the people in, in USDA because USDA used to be based in Boca Raton, which is where right. I used to live. So mm -hmm. most of the people in USDA I already knew. Um, so when I was working some of the camps, I just told them how interested I was in USDA yeah. and broadening my knowledge. And I actually mm -hmm. got an invita um, invitation from Caitlin Stokes. She sent oh. me an email and said, you know, apply. Yeah. And yeah. Get accepted and. I was yeah. lucky enough to get picked and yeah. 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 So it worked out really nicely. Yeah. Well, um, talk a little bit more about like you, you had a lot of, um, I remember when we were talking through this, like you had a lot of homework and stuff to do. Like what were some projects that you had to do in the program? Yeah, there were, there were quite a few things. Um, I had to pick a student of mine that I had been working with that I wanted to come up with a developmental plan for. Right. And typically the age for a developmental plan is, you know, 12, 12 to 18 before college. Yeah. Um, so that you have, you know, definitely an impact on their scheduling um, and that you see a few times a week yourself so you can stay um, involved in everything and you're his primary coach. So I actually used an 11 year old. Um, his name is Luca Zamani and I have been working with him for over three years uh -huh. and I felt that I could still, you know, do the exact same thing with him and it would end up helping him and help him with the guideline for the next year. So I picked him and we had to come up with a developmental plan where you talk about his game, the ins and outs, the positives and negatives. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also come up with short term goals. So three months goals, six months, a year. Um, and we talk about technical, tactical, physical and mental strengths and weaknesses and how, you know, you just kind of write it all out. I think my developmental plan ended up being about 14 pages. So, yeah, it, right. it's long, but it's also, I mean, it's important. Um, I know he's yeah. young, he's 11 and um, he doesn't need to know absolutely everything about that, but um, right. everybody that is a part of his developmental plan, um, Connor Van Alstein is my boyfriend and my um, coach that I work under for, Santa Rosa Junior College. He's right. I put him in part of the plan because he helps me with lessons and he's watched this mm -hmm. this child grow and 
yeah. um, help him in, in all different areas. And then his parents yeah. are a big part of the developmental plan. So yeah. that's also part of the developmental plan is explaining you know, what their role is. And right. that's always important. Um, the parents have to trust the coach that they're trusting mm -hmm. with their child, um, mm -hmm. understanding the line of communication and what is appropriate during certain times, either during competition or during practicing. Just right. uh, kind of puts it all out there for a guideline for them, a guideline mm -hmm. for me. And then mm -hmm. it's a, um, if I'm able to be upfront about what I'm seeing and how I think we can get better moving forward. And then a fun part of the developmental program is also Luca telling me what his goals are and writing them out and what his three months goals, six and yeah. a year, and then why they're his goals. So right. it's not, you know, I can say all of these things and he's 11 and no matter what age, it needs to come from him. You can't just be exactly. doing yeah. things to make me happy as a coach. It needs to come from him. It needs to be his game, his identity. Right. Um, and so that was really great too. I, as a coach, my most important thing for me is to have open line of communication and to make them feel comfortable. They can talk to me about how they're feeling uh, before practice, during practice, after, and know that I'm not judging them. I'm only there to help. Um, right. So then feed it an easy platform for him to talk about all different levels of his game and yeah. and yeah so that was that was really great and the last thing we had to do yeah to no get into all of them but we also yeah, did a, a, a week plan for an entire year so every yeah. week we had a, um, a schedule talking about what we would want to work on physical mm -hmm. mental tactical and we had to yeah. put that put that on paper and that was really exciting, although it kind of got, got put on hold during <laughs> during this time. I didn't yeah. think we were just going to have a two month break from actually hitting a ball together, but yeah. you know, things happen in life and it's all about problem solving. So yeah, yeah. you know, we talk every other day and I give him yeah. some drills to do on his own and against a wall and you know, we're still trying yeah. to grow. Yeah, there you go. And that's, you just do the best you can right now, I think is the uh, mindset that we're all trying to adopt. <laughs> um, well, so considering like all this, you know, your coaching experience and, you know, high performance and, um, and all your professional experience so far, what are the things you most enjoy and what are some challenges as well? Um, honestly, I just love, I love being on the court. I love helping people. Um, I think there's beauty in working with people at all different levels. I have definitely had more of an appreciation for that over the years that I've been working with at community college level. Right. I've always, um, I mean, I've played at a pretty high level. Um, so I think when you have played at that level, you always think, well, yes, that's what you want to coach at. You know, you want to coach at that level, but yeah. there's beauty in coaching at every level. And um, right. I've just noticed that watching somebody that doesn't know how to play tennis and a few months later they're carrying on a rally across the net with somebody else and they're having a blast is equally as exciting as working with someone that's super talented that mm -hmm. has one little technical flaw that you can dive into and fix and now they have confidence at the end of sets with that you know so-called right. weakness so, honestly i just love every part of it i love mm -hmm. um, connecting with people um, i think yeah. what is really great about tennis is that every person has their has their own game and it's and it's theirs and right. you're trying to help add to that you're helping um, them see outside the box and mm -hmm. there's just so many so many different things that you can help if they trust you well enough to let you in and let you into their yeah. game yeah so there really isn't too many angles that I, I don't like I think yeah, yeah. Every angle is a new challenge and mm -hmm. every student that I've had has been a different challenge because they all come from different backgrounds and different experiences and you know their home life could be different than what I had but I'm always trying to grow and, and figure them out so that I can help them in those pressure moments so right. I really enjoy that um I would say the hardest part in coaching for me, especially at the um, community college level or, mm -hmm. or at uh, division one or two level is when you have a team of eight to 10 players, sometimes um, mm -hmm. not all of them get to make the lineup every day, every day that you yeah. compete. So yeah. that's always a tricky subject is trying to make sure that they're, they're still motivated, even though they might not be able to play every match, but realizing mm -hmm. that it's a team, and you all still have to work together and try and put your best foot forward and, and mm -hmm. the time will come and there'll be matches that you'll get to play, but just making sure that everybody is happy and understands that even if they're not 
able to compete on that day, that they're still bringing so much to the table and that when their teammates are succeeding, it's an entire group group thing. You practice every day together. You're constantly yeah. lifting each other up. Um, right. So yeah, just that's reinforced on a regular basis with the kids is very important and yeah and it's not always it's not always easy so I'd say that's yeah. probably the hardest part is to make sure that you know everybody is communicating and having a good time like it's it's impossible to have everybody having a great time and great experience on the court from the moment they step foot on the court the first day till the right. end of the season so oh, realistic yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, that back and realizing that the core of what you're trying to do is you know get better and, and grow as a team and as an individual yeah yeah no for sure um well so I want to dive um kind of into a different direction in some of the experience you've had um and I'd like you to talk a little bit about your undergrad major um in communications and yeah. um, and and just you know that that whole experience and how you got into that and how that you know how what you learned in the program you know you've taken that into what you do now so well um yeah so i was communications uh major at university of florida and mm -hmm. i ended up in production yeah and i remember um i hadn't decided my when i had left i hadn't decided yet exactly which profession in communications i was going to take um mm -hmm. i originally thought I was going to be media and society, which meant that you were going to have a little bit of every single field in communications, but right. you didn't have a main focus. So that was the path that I was on. But then when I went and played pro tennis and I came back, that was um, that route when I came back to school would have taken me longer than simply picking one that I was most interested in. Yeah. And uh, I picked production because you know, I just thought it would be really fun. And honestly, I didn't know anything about it. So I thought yeah. it would be just a really fun new challenge. Yeah. I found out later, uh, probably when I was almost, almost graduating that it's the hardest profession in communications. Oh, great. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, um, yeah, it was really fun. You got to use a camera, learn all about the different, different angles, how to use a camera, how to um, film differently for movies, how to film when you're um, trying to film a sporting event. So mm -hmm. I learned a lot about a lot about that and a lot about editing. I realized mm -hmm. um, just yeah. how OCD I am when you have to edit your own footage. And yeah. I think a lot of tennis players are probably perfectionists to a fault yeah. because nothing in life is going to be perfect. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. That I chose for school. Um, you have to edit a lot and you're just, you're always looking for perfection and always looking for right. it to be as best or as great as it can be. So yeah. that was, uh, really fun and really challenging. But at the end of the day, when I, when I graduated, it was so satisfying and I had so many, um, side projects in that major that I got to film sporting events and yeah. do documentaries of people that I admired at the university of Florida. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my senior projects, I interviewed Roland Thornquist, who was my head coach, and I was working under at that time. Um, Florida had an unbelievable streak of not losing at home, um, I think for 13 seasons, um, something, something outrageous. And I did a documentary on him and what that's like as a coach, and do you think about it, and do you, yeah. how do you motivate the kids to keep that in the back of their head? And yeah just not keep that in the back of their head and just go out and perform so um, yeah I was really lucky that I picked that major because I thought it helped me grow as a coach because I was learning mm -hmm. so many different coaches right. um, and I was learning the ins and out of production at the same time so yeah. it was really, really exciting um I haven't used it a super I haven't used it much since I since I left because I don't yeah. have a camera it's really expensive um yeah but I have made a lot of fun videos with Premiere Pro because I kept that for a few years and paid for it. And it was really fun for friends and family to put things together and send videos yeah. during holidays or birthdays. So yeah. I definitely still use that aspect of it, but um, yeah. without, a, without paying for an expensive camera, it's kind of hard to keep that, keep that yeah. going. Yeah. Maybe, maybe in the future I'll, uh, I was going to say, you never knew when it might come back around. <laughs> These these new things that I haven't been able to use for a while, but maybe I'll yeah. maybe I'll who knows. Yeah. Well. Well, speaking of the future, what are you looking forward to in the future when we get back get back to some sense of normalcy? 
No, well, honestly, I think I'm just getting back. I, I'll be really excited to get back on court. Um, I mean, I'm learning. I'm learning a lot from being off court right now with videos yeah. and reading. Um, but I think the thing I'm most looking forward to is just connecting with all of those people on court that I've been, mm -hmm. I've been missing out on right now. But I think it's like a five year plan is, is definitely to stay clearly stay involved in tennis, but uh, yeah. maybe coach at division one alongside Connor Van Alstine or work with USTA. Um, just continue yeah. to grow <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and give back because I just, yeah love being a part of it every day. I've got a real passion for it. And mm -hmm. I just hope that, um, you know, this virus calms down soon and we can get back to mm -hmm. our, our normal lives. And hopefully this teaches us to take care of ourselves even better than we did before and to wash our hands mm -hmm. more. And hopefully this doesn't, doesn't come back and yeah, you know, on court soon. Yeah. Well, and like you're saying, just establish like good habits, right? Like day in, day out, not just with the days when we have to, just the days yeah. to maintain our health. I think that's just a really good reminder for everybody. Yeah, and this yeah. is a time that, you know, we really should be using to improve ourselves and to mm -hmm. learn from because yeah. eventually this will calm down. And I'm hoping that when it calms down, we all don't just go straight back to everything that we were doing. We still... Right that every time you get off the tennis court you need to wash your hands you need to not touch your face and you need right. to you know just take take these kind of things seriously for the rest of your life not just during yeah. this time yeah no exactly <laughs> um well so what advice or suggestions do you have for professionals or people looking to get into the tennis industry and specifically you know in private coaching and and college coaching um Becoming USPTA certified was a, a big thing for me. I think somebody that's just trying to get into the sport a little bit more, it's really good networking. You get to meet a lot of people and um, USPTA offers um, opportunities all over the US. It doesn't have to be exactly where you live, but I'm sure mm -hmm. relatively where you live, there probably is a USPTA training facility. Um, I think that's really good for people. Um, you establish a new community. They teach you um, how to coach, how to do basic things that maybe if you were a professional tennis player, you didn't necessarily have to get taught yourself, but you learn different ways to um, teach people. I think that's a, a great avenue to start up with. Um, honestly, any you can do so many things online. You can read so right. many books. Actually getting out there and being on court, interacting with people, I think is um, is a great way to do it. So I'd say start with USPTA, try and get certified. If you don't want to get certified, you can still learn from the USDA sites. They offer so many great videos. Um, mm -hmm. There's also, I think it's like live, live TV, something with USDA yeah. where they show you a bunch of drills to help with kids because you want to make sure that when you're teaching kids, you're not doing the same thing every day and you're broadening your mind and having different yeah. challenges. So yeah. It's, a, they have so many different platforms to teach you about different, different drilling techniques so that yeah. the kids aren't bored and they're really hungry every time they come to practice. So there's so many things out there. I mean, what works for me might not work for you or might not work for the viewers that are listening, but uh, mm -hmm. just put yourself out there. Um, Tennis, there's a great community in tennis, all different levels, all different mm -hmm. sections. Just uh, put yourself out there and and you'll have nothing to regret if you do that. So yeah, that's, that's my good. advice. <laughs> that's great advice. Well, so, hey, what do you do when you're not on the tennis court? What do you like to do for fun? Well, <laughs> right now I'm, uh, I'm with my parents, but when I'm not here, I'm in Northern California and I just started uh, making beef jerky with my boyfriend, we just started a, up a company that he used to have a few years ago. So that's one of my new hobbies is making beef jerky and selling it to friends and family. Um, when I'm not, that's still considered kind of working. So when I'm not working, yeah. <laughs> I love to be outside of hiking and biking and uh, trying to just stay active. I think fresh air is the best therapy in the world. So uh, yeah. yeah, I just love, I just love being, being out outdoors as much as possible in my free time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, what about, so the beef jerky business, I did, I didn't want to bring back <laughs> something on that because, um, I wanted to see if y'all had a name for it. Have y'all called, called bomb jerky? Oh, that's right. Bomb jerky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. 
the logo, the logo, uh, the bomb is actually a, a peace sign. Oh, neat. Yeah, so it's cool. really cute. I mean, Connor, Connor invented this whole thing yeah. back in like 2001, probably. I don't know. It was a yeah. long, long time ago. But um, yeah. but yeah, we're bringing it back and it's been really fun, mm -hmm. really fun to do work yeah. together. And it tastes great. So it's a really great, healthy snack. Yeah. So. High protein, too. So yeah, not much sugar. So yeah. we'll be promoting it soon. Yeah, please let us know the website. I can post it so that the listeners and the viewers can have access to it because we want to promote healthy stuff on the show. <laughs> I'll make sure to do that. Well, and I hear it's funny because when we last talked, we found out that we had a mutual thing that we're both learning, um, you know, piano. When we <laughs> we talked about piano, are you have you done anything yet with your mom? Um, I haven't. Um, I just got here a few days ago, and I yeah. had jumped on that. I've been learning to cook and bake different things. That's been the new thing. But um, okay. I can talk to my mom today, and we're gonna have our we're gonna have our first lesson. Yeah, um, something that I've always wanted to do, but tennis and sports just kind of took over in school, and I didn't have the the time yeah. or really the discipline to make that happen. So mm -hmm. um, she's gonna teach me some little tidbits, and and hopefully yeah. I can have a new way, and then I'll get a um, a keyboard. And yeah. when I'm back in NorCal I can continue to try and teach myself but it's definitely up there as, as one of my priorities during this time oh yeah yeah no for sure well hey maybe you never know we could start a band or something when we get, <laughs> when we get good. Absolutely. absolutely I mean Connor Connor can be the drummer too so he likes, okay, he likes yeah. that so, and James yeah. can play guitar so I mean I'm, I'm here in a band <laughs> Yeah, I love it. We'll, we'll make sure to put a link to that on your on your new right, yeah. Oh but, man. Listen, music. We are all set. I know that's all you need in life. Yeah, this time. I, yeah, I know, right? Oh my gosh. Well, Allie, thanks so much for coming on the show. So good to see you and talk to you as always. Yeah, thank you. It's been a pleasure. And yeah, and it, it's just been awesome. I know uh, for everyone to hear about your experience and. Um, you know, very, very cool. All, all very neat. And um, best, best wishes in the future. I know I'll talk to you probably <laughs> within the next five minutes. But you know, I just want to wish you all the best. Thank so, you so much, everyone. Well, awesome. Well, and thanks to all of our viewers. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Remember to like us, find us on socials, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. You can subscribe, subscribe down below, and. Um, and yeah, just keep tuning back in. We'll have new episodes coming up and uh, hope you all have a great weekend and we'll see you later. Bye. <laughs>